I don't know about that, but the thing is, I replace your motor. Were you surprised at the level of larceny here? They seem to think that they can get away with anything. And if you challenge them and you ask them any questions, they become incensed. They're outraged that you even question their ability. But there was one exception to that rule. It happened when we confronted Ben Igon. Well, no, I would like you to explain to us why you charged us for a new motor when, in fact, all you did was repair the old one. And I don't think so. This how I think. I think I replaced the new motor. No, you didn't. I didn't. You don't have the old motor. The old motor is back in the refrigerator. So what'd you do? Once again, we showed him our undercover tape. How he'd gotten an old motor from his truck and planted it in the trash. And, and now you're telling her that that's the old motor out of the refrigerator. Yeah, right now I can tell whole story. All right, okay. tell us the whole story. The whole story. We thought okay. we'd finally gotten a repairman to crack, to confess he'd ripped us off. But what we really got was another variation of the repairman dodge. I don't feel bad that much because I didn't charge it that too much. Ben said his work had taken two or three hours, far longer than he'd expected. So instead of getting into a fight over the labor cost, he decided to charge us for a new part. In fact, the job only took him 45 minutes. But Ben insisted our producer had still come out ahead. To me, I thought I did a favor for her. You did a favor? I, that's how I feel. You weren't ripping her off? No. Let me ask you a question, sure. Ben. Sure. Have you done it before? To no. This is the first time you've ever done this in this your life? Is in my life, yes. Ben, come on. Really? The one time that you're on television is the only time you ever did this? Come on. Just let me just... I think that's the only first thing. So, what can a consumer do to avoid being ripped off? One way is to avoid some common mistakes. So I shopped around in the yellow pages. Get references before they come. Investigator Rick Beasler says the way to pick a repairman is to get referrals from friends or ask the manufacturer for an authorized service center. He says the number in a big yellow pages ad often just goes to a telephone boiler room, which sells your call to a freelance repairman for a large fee. He knows he's already in the hole. He's got to make his money back. He's going to sell you something. Whether you need it or not. Exactly. He didn't put the name of the part on the bill, so I don't know what that was. A legitimate repair shop will provide an itemized list of parts replaced, not vague scribbled notes like these. Do you have the old parts that I could have? And ask for the old parts. It didn't always help us, but Jeff Atkinson says it will if you ask up front before the work is done, even if you don't know a door switch from a diode. Why do I want the old parts if I don't know whether they're good? Because you're coming off as an educated consumer. So even if you don't know, bluff? Yes, exactly. Walk in like you know what you're talking about. And one more mistake to avoid. The work was done while I was at work, so I couldn't observe very much. Stay within the room. Uh, don't bother the man while he's working, and, but stay within the room. Why? The element of fear of being caught in something that you shouldn't be caught at. But no matter how many precautions you take, no matter how much you know about your appliances, the experts say you're still no match for a clever repairman. If I follow all your advice, if I go to the authorized service center, if I ask for the estimate, if I get the old parts back, does that ensure now that I won't be ripped off? There's no guarantees. But what you're saying is if you've got a dishonest repair shop... They'll you know, rip you off, correct. One more tip about these ripoffs. If you've been tempted to buy one of those extended warranties on a new appliance, make sure you do your homework on the company selling you the plan. Last year, one of the country's biggest extended warranty providers went bankrupt amid charges of financial chicanery. The collapse of EWC Incorporated left more than three million consumers holding worthless extended warranties and facing 55 million in repair bills. Coming up, these pictures.